Okay, oh, brilliant. There we go. Right. Uh, I think that should be everything ready to go. Sorry about the um, scuff start there, guys. If you can hear me right, just uh, make sure you just type in the chat. Um, but we're just currently getting underway for qualifying for the uh, Biscuit Hybrid uh, Format Challenge Race 1, hosted at Nürburgring. Um, apologies for the little bit of the late start, a few scuff bits and bobs. We'll be joined shortly by uh, Pandas, uh, just so that we can get things underway. Um, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, it's good to see you all. We've currently got a new format that we'll be testing here today with everyone. So I just I hope it all goes well. Okay, uh, unfortunately I've had to step in at last minute so I haven't got a lot of stuff to set up so I'm still trying to get some bits and bobs sorted. Um, if you do hear my keyboard here clacking away, that's because unfortunately I haven't got any of the uh, stuff set up properly as of yet. Um, if we just return to garage, uh, see who's on track. So we'll, if your livery hasn't loaded, my apologies, I did send a message out to get the livery sent out today, uh, earlier today. So. Apologies if that hasn't been put through, uh, but we're just looking at the start of qualifying now. Uh, was it? Yeah, I'll end of free practice at the moment. Um, I think everyone have returned back for the race briefing. So we'll be kicking off with qualifying shortly. Uh, and yeah, it's looking like it should be an interesting one. Uh, Diego uh, taking a good time with the Porsche there. Uh, and we've also got uh, the number 86 BMW there, uh, looking pretty strong as well. Nippam always strong in the Audi, uh, and the number 15 BMW, so a few BMWs at the top. A completely German top 5 there, in terms of the car mate, so at a German track, you kind of expect it, so it should be interesting. Uh, as I said before... Speaking we... of German... Oh, here he is! Big man himself! Hello there! Oh, you alright? Welcome. Uh, right I'm then. Right. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm gonna have to turn you up. Uh, give me two seconds. So yeah, just kicking off. Uh, just coming to the end of practice at the moment. Uh, looks like. Uh, do you want me to share my screen so that you can just see what I've got going on? Yes, but I have the game open as well. All ah, right. Okay. Sound. So you've got other stuff. Um, are you gonna be alright to? Um go and grab any penalty reports if you need as well, just in case uh, they do get posted through. Uh, yes, of course. It's sound fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, in a couple of seconds, I just need to grab a couple of bits and bobs as well. As you can imagine, it's been a bit of a frantic push down and sort it out. I think you're quite aware of that as well, though. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So just currently uh, on board with what well, on board. Currently watching. Uh, go for, for, oh, hang on, two seconds. I've just about that. The probably the resolution is kind of funky there. In two seconds. Uh, my Windows has decided to be a twat. BMW here, she just about to start his final lap of the practice session. We'll see if he just makes the line. Yeah, I believe he does. So, yeah, just going to be watching these guys finish up. Um, any uh, any predictions of what's going on? Oh, uh, to be honest, um, I don't have any prediction for tonight. Um, like, we have the usual cases uh, who are strong favorites like uh, Diego, Harry. Uh, Nipam Shah is up there as well, also very fast. Um, and then you have some people I don't really know or haven't seen yet, so uh, I don't know how they are gonna perform. It's good um, to see so many new faces around, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. So many... Oh, that's a bit of a punt there from the Audi who was just following Rusi there. Uh, that's a bit of a shame on his final lap of the practice session. Uh, I imagine he'll just return back to the garage. Uh, right yes, right, and we see everybody. Oh. Why is that on? 
What's up? Uh, my... I've... I disabled a DDL line, but it's uh, showing on my screen. Yeah, I had to disable it, then leave and rejoin. Fantastic. Looks like we're about to head over to qualifying. Evening deck. I've just seen you in the chat there. Um, it's looking like it should be a good little event. Uh, so we're just going to be a. Uh, been a while. I need to get back into the swing of doing all this again. So just on board with Harry Spies, who's currently leading the pack, uh, coming out for their first flying laps. So I think that it should be an interesting little event. Um, Harry's in the Porsche, which is not a normal car for him, so it'll be very interesting to see how he gets on. No, uh, you're right. Uh, usually I think we see him in the Mercedes, don't we? Yeah, he's in the Merc, in the 2015 Merc to be particular. I don't think he's a big fan of the newer one. But uh, he seems to have, uh, I think, I believe, is he teammates with Diego, or is it just coincidence in the same car? Uh, I actually don't know that, but... Might be, no, uh, Diego is in a different car, is he? Uh, no, he's in the Porsche. Yeah, but uh, the delivery is completely different. I've, uh, I haven't got um, Harry's delivery, unfortunately. I don't know if he uploaded it in time for the team sync to take effect. Ah, uh, okay. So unfortunately he's just got a black car at the moment, however I, d I did put a warning out to all drivers earlier on, so they should have been aware. Um, yeah, just watching through now as he comes around to start his final lap, we'll uh, go on board with him just to see what he's got going on. comes around now from the final corner onto the start finish straight as he powers down into that immense braking zone of the first corner. It's a really challenging braking zone this, I'd argue more than even Monza, especially because it's the way it goes downhill as well and it goes away from you. It's very hard to get right and very easy to mess up. Oh yes, and the next couple of corners, those left hand turns aren't uh, to be underestimated as well. Very tricky to get them right. Being on the throttle just enough so your do uh, car don't get too far outside of the track. And it looks good. What do you reckon uh, first time for Harry? Pretty tight. Should Three sector to one there. Um, I'll be yeah. interested to see the time boards as they all start filtering through. Uh, as we uh, see him now thundering down to the hairpin at the bottom of the truck, at which he'll switch back through. You can take a lot of speed into this hairpin though, because of the way it's banked. It's, uh, I mean, it's a lot of a faster corner than a lot of people think. As you can see there, mm. uh, that Porsche mighty, especially in terms of air and braking. Um, as a result, you can take in a tremendous amount of speed, especially through these Schumacher S's coming up as well. Um, thundering up to the next chicane. Um, we have one yellow flag. Uh, Hartfield to number 197 car and the 198 car Taylor is causing a yellow flag as well. Both red flags cleared now. Right, fantastic. Uh, yeah, you've got to a be yellow careful. flag. Sorry. Really got to be careful. Yellow flag. Oh, Harry Spice has a Ooh. massive moment there through the final chicane. He's going to be kicking himself on that one. Oh yes. That was a big old, uh, big old moment there. He's going to probably get ready and see if he can do it again, but I don't know if those tyres are going to be cooked from that. Uh, I'm going to flip back through, see what anyone else, because I believe uh, some of the people should be start uh, filtering through now, finishing up. Um, two seconds. And we see Nippon has posted the first time, by the looks of things, hmm. of a 155.5. Uh, so we'll see how that stacks up to the rest of the competition as they all filter through. Uh, Rusu there going P2 with a two minute flat. Uh, Diego has just finished his, I think that was an invalidated lap because it hasn't counted it. Um, Bob, Bob Nar there with a 157.1 taking P3. And Schmid in the 230 car taking P2 as well. Some of the time starting filtering as well. And uh, 
So Bognar's already been knocked off by Cal in the 255 uh, Honda as well. Looks like this Honda's going pretty well taking B4 and B5. Or is not necessarily in the traditional pick. <clears throat> Norton coming in in the number 12 car with a uh, 56.125. It's a pretty strong time, especially compared to yes. some other guys. Uh, considering the V8 Aston is seen as one of the worst cars on the uh, on the GT3 game at the moment. Uh, typically a very easy car to drive because of its turbo lag makes it a bit more of a um, growth pick because you can't get out those low speed corners like that. Yeah, but to be fair, if your car is stable, you can, uh, especially on Nürburgring, you can carry uh, a good amount of speed through the corners if you get them just right. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a really important factor on here. Is a lot of these corners are very sweeping at Nürburgring, so it's really important to be able to carry as much speed as you can. Uh, looking through as well, Havana Banana there, setting a, uh, uh, currently sitting in a P11 at the moment in the uh, 595 Audi, uh, 959 sorry, I'm just going to switch over to the bit of time board for you guys so you can see what's going on at the moment, there we go, so yeah, um, currently we've got about half the grid that's put through, uh, but as you can see there's a few of them that haven't put fully representative times in like Yaris for example where he's expected to go quite a bit quicker, um, and um, a few good times though, good showing from Reese Corbin there in the uh, BMW GT3, uh, as well as a few other people, um, Trev there in his Audi, also showing up there, uh, up in P8, uh, Andre Katz in P5 in the BMW, so yeah, uh, certainly looking good for a lot of the teams. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a very interesting uh, watch as we see the cars talk to prove. We've only about three and a half minutes left on the qualifying session. Yeah, we still have uh, Harry Spears to set a lap, so uh, we see about how this goes. Yeah, as well as that, with Yaris yet to set a representative lap as well, Yaris being uh, a massive Porsche main as well. I think that between those two and Diego, we could be seeing a very big shake-up at the top soon. Yeah. Also, we have Victor Galan not uh, in the number of 419 car, not uh, setting a lap now. So, still have to wait on him to show what he's bringing to the table today. Okay. Also in the Porsche. All right. Yeah, they seem that I think it makes sense the reason around this track because, like I said, it's all about momentum around here, uh, which is crucially important. Uh, Yaris has set a time now, a 1.56.9, currently sitting in P13. Uh, it just shows how much of a competitive grid we've currently got with this. He's now down to P15. Um, of course, only a 10 minute qualifying session. You've only really got two fine laps at most uh, if you want to get a fresh set of tyres for each lap. Victor Galan going into P2 now with a 155.657. With a mighty time there from him. Uh, fantastic stuff, fantastic work there from him. Uh, good to see him having such a blast out there. Uh, just finishing up so so yeah, and we have uh harry spears now with his last uh, attempt he's on an outlap now uh, he needs to be really quick to be able to put in one last uh hot lap diego uh diego fimbre canasas has gone p2 overall knocking with to gun from that spot as well those four mm. really are having a mighty showing Yes, they are. Yeah, Yoris is down to a P17 and a P15 there for Sunny Cal. I don't think he improved, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these guys are going to be so We've got a yellow flag in Sector 1. That looks like that's been cleared now. Uh, Harry Spurs is uh, just on his final lap. Uh, see him coming down into the air bin. It's going to be really imperative he gets a good lap here and doesn't invalidate it. Because if he doesn't, he's going to be starting from the back, which knowing him, well, he'll half want it anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's that familiar with the current car though, so he might be a little bit adverse and just wants to get a decent qualifying underneath him. Looks like he's got a, um, a car that isn't on a fine lap at the moment, currently in his way. And the, uh, uh, Taylor there, who's just trying to get past. There we go, fantastic stuff there, lets him through nicely. 
Uh, unfortunately for Taylor, he might just be able to start a new final up, but it'd be very close. As we see him come to the chicane where Harry lost it last time. Gets through there tightly. All he's got is one more corner to go. And we see him set a time. Yeah, around the final corner cleanly. No, this is uh, not time. This is an outlap. Oh, this is an outlap? Yes. Oh, right, okay. I told you that. Like, this is his last chance now. Ah, right, okay. He's certainly left it late in the day, hasn't he? Yeah. Not many drivers left to go in at the moment, but it really is imperative for him to set a lap, then. I thought he'd at least have a banker lap set. Yeah, no, no, he... Uh, it's cleared now. He seems uh, to have some problems in uh, some sectors. Yeah. And reset it, uh, I think, one good... L uh, one lap that seemed good, but probably wasn't then because he reset that. If I've seen that correctly. He might have invalidated it. Um, I know the first lap he invalidated by running over the chicane. Uh, he certainly using all of the track limits there. Uh, very experienced driver is Harry Races in a lot of the uh, esports level events. Uh, he does. Oh, okay, uh, I think I've got a couple of decent issues. Apologies for any lag there. Oh, yeah. Or oh, that was some hidden uh, sim racing technique we don't know about. <laughs> yes. The fastest way to take that corner to uh, slide halfway through it and then let your car glitch back around. As he comes now through to the uh, flat out section of the track, uh, into the final sector, it's auto automaker appear for him. He's one of the last cars remaining on the track. Is he still racing for Sidemax? Is he, or is he now with someone else? I don't know. I saw my. The last thing I know of uh, is Sidemax, so uh, I would guess so. Yeah, I've never been 100% sure where he's been after for the Villa, mm. but yeah, so he crosses the line now and goes P1 uh, with a 154.8. Uh, the uh, typical Frubo style there, taking P1 at the very last second. Um, yeah, he seems that once he's been able to get that car hooked up, uh, it does seem to get it well. Uh, but we've got our top three of Harry Spears, Nipam Shah, and Diego Fimbres Casas there. Uh, very good stuff there. On the more, as we now head over to the race, and we'll get things started shortly. Yeah, what a massive flap. That was a huge lap from him. Uh, other notables there, Andre Katz in P8 with the BMW, uh, some strong performance from him. Uh, uh, Michael Favier in P22 with a 157.035. Strong hmm. lap from Michael, as you, as you probably remember, he was one of the um, hmm. one of the champion, one of the uh, AM contenders last season for BCSS. Um, yeah, so we'll be getting things underway shortly. Obviously, there's uh, two minutes and a half on the grid. Um, all the drivers aren't... Then, uh, normally, because with this one, it'd be a hybrid event. So there would be either a sprint series or an endurance series. So the idea is is you'll have... Um, one week it'll be a sprint series, another week it'll be a endurance series. I'm not 100% sure on the calendar. You'll probably have to check that on the uh, SimGrid web website where you can view the series. Um, but yeah, it's looking like it's a pretty close grid. 32 cars on the grid, so we've got a very good turnout. Uh, hoping it's going to be a good race. Yes. Certainly a lot of Audi's, BMWs and Porsches. Uh, a few Hondas and Astons and Mercedes mm. scattered out for as well. And I think BMW got... has a pretty good showing as well with uh, four in the top ten. Yeah, uh, BMW's got a lot actually here. I've got one lonely McLaren with Jay Shaw there, um, mm. holding it up for the uh, for the for the British side uh, with the uh, with Norton and uh, Cesaristo there in the uh, P5 and P6. Considering that uh, we've only got four McLarens race and two of them in the top six is a really strong show for them. Yeah. And Mercedes uh, seems to be quite uh, unpopular these days as well. Uh, which which sorry which car sorry uh, uh the AMG Mercedes yeah it's um it's performed out of favour hasn't it because it, it used to be a really popular car but mm. I think Bop hasn't been too kind to it has it mm -hmm. um I that's, so, 
that is what a lot of this boils down to is a balance of play where what will happen is, is if one card is deemed too powerful it will either have a force down force reduced or it will have some power taken away for a restrictor plate or there will be some adverse effect being put on the car whether it's through extra ballast or something like that just to try and even out the playing field it's why we can have so many different cars but be so close on pace all at the same time which is fantastic to watch and makes for great viewing because uh, it means that one manufacturer can't run away with it, unlike other sports. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a good, good, good one as we uh, come to start the formation lap two, and we'll uh, get things underway shortly. Ten seconds. Yeah, and um, I'm go going to expect if nothing happens, uh, we were going to get a very close race. Yeah, um, um, we all know how uh, quick uh, Harry Spears is, is and Nipam Shah as well has taken the BCSS uh, championship win before as well. So neither of those two are anything to go by. Diego has massively upped his game recently and has gotten a lot faster, especially in that Porsche. Um, and Victor Gallen there, who's uh, been, been absent for a little bit but making a good return and a strong performance mm. there. Andre mm. Katz, more known for his AMS2 accolades, being one of the fastest mm. drivers in that game, really had a strong showing in ACC. Considering it's not his main sim, he's putting in a really good show. Um, yeah. But yeah, flicking through mm. as well. Um, yeah, and we have, uh, uh, if uh, the game is showing me that correctly, we have a Ukrainian driver, Pavlo Polovchuk, which is new to me. Uh, I think this is his first uh, appearance in uh, a BCSS series. Yeah, it's good to see. Uh, good to see we've got many different people uh, from many different places. Uh, it's why, why uh, yeah. the biscuit events are so good because they attract uh, so many different people from so many different countries. Um, and it, it's such an encompassing community, which is um, good for everyone. Um, yes. You can see we've got a Brit and a German running it. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it should be an interesting one. Uh, I believe on, just to give a shout out to the stewards as well during the formation lap. We've currently got um, Declan Bowler and uh, Charlie Kent, who I'm sure would have both been loved to have been driving, but they're doing stewarding duties for this race. So um, yeah, just to give a shout out to them for taking uh, for taking some time to to uh, live steward this event. It's uh, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do live stewarding uh, because a lot of the time it, you're you're always going to piss someone off, and when it's people you know. You always feel bad doing it, but you have to take a very objective look at things. Um, and yet somehow we're still better than the Formula One stewards, but that's not really that hard, is it? <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> um, kind of helps we've got the game to do track limits for us anyway, so... Yeah, and we are under less pressure, I would guess. Oh yeah, I think um, uh, the pressure aspect is definitely... We don't have millions of people watching, so we've just got... Our five viewers here today, which thank you for joining us for watching this event. Um, I'm sure you'll uh, enjoy greatly what is uh, about to unfold. Yes, uh, now approaching, uh, or rather on the back straight. So we will soon be seeing uh, people uh, going uh, two rows, two wide, into the star formation and the last couple of corners. Um, Let's hope for T1 to be great today and not terrible yeah normally these guys are pretty good i can't imagine there being any major problems in all honesty as you can see everyone's now going two by two mm. through the uh, through the final chicane not always easy to go two by two through here but luckily collisions are disabled for the formation lap uh, otherwise it might get a little bit messy just while people find their positions got to remember as well that um especially when trying to form up in a position like this, it's not completely seamless, as you can see, especially with players like Diego. They're always going to have issues with lag, especially considering he's coming from Mexico. So it, it's True. never going to be perfect. So it, it, if you do see some crashes or anything, don't immediately go and blame the drivers. There could always be an issue. But lights out and away we go. Looks like a good start there from Nip. I mean, might have a run down into Harris Spears into the first corner. Diego also trying to put his presence there as well. As Harry Spires later on the brakes, the nip arms that go down to the first corner. Diego has a look on the inside, uh, and he's now side by side with the nip as they go up to the top. Um, uh, we have a crash uh, <laughs> there. Uh, so we have a little pile up with uh, 
with David Brown, um, Colin Courtney, and Medic Bobnar. A few people are in that, so we'll see what the stewards uh, will have to say about that. Looks like Diego's lost a position there to the number 86 BMW, who's made up a position up to P3. Uh, the two Aston Martins there still in P5, P6. Victor Gallen making his way to P7 there. Um, so some good moves from people. Uh, yeah. Looking at putting pressure there. The line is just updating now. Sorry if the broadcasting tower is going a little bit mental for the time being. It will do for the start of the race. Um, yeah, like, then we. Uh, off one looks into the hairpin, but we'll put them off. Then we have uh, Felix Schiff with a drive-through in uh, P11, I think it is. Car number 244. Car number 244, yeah. It's good. reading P14 on my screen, but it might not have updated. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it looks yeah. like it's been a good start as well. As we see Trev there getting overtaken by the Porsche of Yaris, who, while he didn't unfortunately have the best qualifying, he's certainly trying to make up time now. Um, really, uh, really good stuff there from Yaris as he then starts to look towards Ma Martin Vavia there, who's made, managed to make his way up nicely up the order. Um, ah, that's not as Trev, sorry. Uh, Martin Vavia is the one behind him. Unfortunately, sorry, because the way the time would be, but it's not always easy to tell who's where. Uh, so if we do make mistakes, don't reach me, please. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately for Chef there, he had to serve his drive from now. Most likely that was due to being out of position at the start. Fastest lap there, I believe, for uh, Jerry Lidgren there. Uh, good stuff from him. We've managed to ride his way from to P6. And really good racing there, mm -hmm. he Um uh, so looking at the group, we've only got one switch around in the top five mm. between P3 and P4. Uh, looks like uh, Lidman there has managed to break up the Aston Martins as well, making it to P6. Good stuff from him. Um, but yeah, as we go a bit further down the order, we can see that Yoris is having a look at the inside of Havana Banana. Uh, so that, uh, having a look at the inside of Trev, like that. Um, all over the back of him, trying to see if he can find a way through. Yeah, and uh, in car number 44, MP15 behind that, Michael Vavier is liking that, of course. Yeah, he's going to be able to keep in touch with those guys, and that's going to be really important yeah. for his race, because that slipstream on the back straight is going to be exceptionally mm. crucial going through mm. this race. As Jesse Dodd is currently in a fight with, uh, who's that? Uh, Erion Haas going side by side through uh, the hairpin at the bottom of the track. Yep, the three BMW M4s absolutely scrapping there. Looks like Arian Hashin might have just been able to pull away. Uh, looks like Jesse Dodd and uh, Pavlo Polchik there. As we see Pavlo go up the inside with a fantastic move there by the number 15 BMW uh, to overtake Jesse Dodd. But I imagine Jesse's going to be trying to get a slipstream all the way down this next straight. Let's try and see if he can come back. Yeah, unfortunately, I think like the, the Jesse didn't get the best run out the final corner, so he's not going to be able to come back uh, coming up there. But yeah, absolutely fantastic work there from Pablo, so good stuff from him. Um, let's be, uh, look back through. Uh, Yaris is still there trying to keep in touch with Trev, making no rush in that one. But you'll suddenly realise that although that Porsche is a monster in the corners, it being down in power and the strike makes it very hard to try and overtake. Ryan Curtis with a 15 second penalty. Uh, do we have any explanation for that? Yeah, uh, it should be in the chat if, it, if there is anything. Yeah, um, keep it up. As he looks to make a move on G Kun there, uh, puts it round the inside, but unfortunately that switches over to the outside onto the exit of sector one, running wide on the track limits. But he looks like he's pulled alongside and gets the move done with the run there. Solid yeah, move. and and he got that uh, violation for avoidable contact, the number 22 car uh, for avoidable contact, and who and the drive through for the number 197 car for avoidable contact. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like those two might have been the ones that caused those start crashes that we saw. Bit of a shame, but other than that, it's a pretty clean start. Uh, Harry Spars has taken the fastest lap of the race by the looks of it, going purple at the moment. Uh, as we look to Yaris, who looks like he's been able to dispatch Tread and is now working his way up to whoever's next on his list. Trying to see a flick through, so we get back up to the top of the uh, 
as we see the Aston Martin there putting the Porsche under or the Audi under all sorts of pressure there. Can Lippmann defend? He does defend well going into the chicane. The Aston Martin doesn't quite look for the move as they go to the hairpin, but unfortunately, you see the turbo lag from the Aston kick in there as well. And uh, the Audi is just able to get a little bit more of a, a pull with its five litre naturally aspirated V8. As they go down to the start finish line now. Um, See what the yellow flags out at the moment. Yellow flags for Trevor in the number 71 car, but he's on track now, so will the, red, the yellow flags will be lifted That's shortly. Good. It's a bit of a shame for him. I tell you what, though, Harry Spears is certainly under pressure here. He has got a lot of cars behind him at the moment, uh, with the likes of. Um, I think there's a whole chain there. I wonder if he's made a mistake, but. He's certainly not being given the grid he's normally able to pull out from the beat, but he's got to be on his toes here. Oh yeah, uh, they're giving him a good run uh, for his money. I wouldn't right be surprised here. if we see a run from Nippon soon to go for the lead here. Catching up to the number 8, 230 BMW. Um, yeah, position 8, two, yeah, number 230 BMW, uh, as they then look towards the, come up to the Schumacher S's. The Porsche is going to be a monster through here because of its air, I believe it can take them all but uh, all but flat. Uh, unlike the BMW, that heavy engine in the front, it's not going to have as much traction through the corners. And you can see the gap visibly close up, especially in the brake here. As Victor's able to definitely make, make uh, sure the gap stays there. Yeah. He's got to be careful coming into this fast section though, because he's not going to have the straight on speed, and he's going to be in the slipstream. So we also in, uh, see Jerry uh, Lippon in uh, number 13 car and P6 now under pressure from behind. Yeah, it's that same story Roman again. You've got the front engine power against the mid engine mm -hmm. agility. Uh, unfortunately, not having the best of run there, the number 97 Aston Martin. Uh, but I think yeah. as soon as he clears Lippard and he's going to be long gone because I think he is slightly quicker it's just that he can't unfortunately use all of his pace being stuck behind the Audi Yes, meanwhile uh, Michael, uh, sorry, Michael Favier uh, getting a, a penalty, a 50 second penalty uh, the number 44 car in the Audi causing a, for causing a collision a shame for him on that one. Uh, he was having a very good race up to that point. He still is though up in P19. Uh, I've just had a very strong showing for him. Um, looking now, we see that the Aston Martin is really at the back of the Audi uh, coming into the second sector. Is he going to have a look? No, I think he's just a bit too far back. As, uh, we'll get a different camera angle now. You really see they are very much bumping to tail there. So there's a bit of contact there as the Aston Martin just pushed past them. Oh! Oh, that is a massive shame for the both of them. I do think that was a bit avoidable for both of them, but the shoots will have their verdict soon. Lippenham having to be careful on the rejoin there as he's been rejoined right in front of Victor Gallen. Let's see if uh, Victor can have a look and overtake him coming up. Uh, I think there's already uh, between number three, two, four, three, and two, three, zero. No further actions. Uh, no. Different sets of cars. I don't think I think that's a different set of cars there. Yeah, uh, between the number 97 Aston. That's between Schmidt and Kun Sabo. We didn't yeah. see that conflict, I think. It looks like uh, Victor has been able to overtake Lippard in there, which is good to see. He's now making his way yeah. up into P7. Really strong turn from him. Um, his teammate making his way up into P13 in the other Iron Force Racing Porsche. Uh, yeah, and Harry now pulling a bit of a gap, 1.1 uh, seconds. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I can see he's a little bit of a gap, but all it takes is the time he's going to snap over steer and that gap will suddenly drop. I think that we'll, he's got to be on his toes as we see uh, in the braking zone, the Audi has definitely been able to close up a little bit. He's, uh, he's certainly not been able to dictate the pace of the race as much as he would have liked um, compared to how he normally likes to. As we see behind as well, that Porsche is really all over the back. Diego is really all over the back of the uh, the BMW there as well, as they then race towards the uh, entry into the second sector. 
Uh, the, the problem Diego's got though is, is he going to have the overall straight line speed to be able to make the move on the BMW? It's all good being faster in the corner, but if you don't have the overall pace, it's, it's going to be difficult. But yeah, it's good to see so many different cars. We've got four different manufacturers in the top five, Audi, BMW, Porsche and Aston Martin. So we've certainly got a variety of this race. There's not one dominant car, considering this battle is certainly spreading out, uh, certainly sp uh, going the distance here. Ten minutes into the race, 20 minutes to go. Uh, yep. the Harry Spears with the fastest lap, uh, but he's certainly not been left alone. Yeah, and with uh, 10 minutes into the race, I actually want to point out uh, a couple of drivers who are doing exceptionally well uh, in this first 10 minutes. Uh, there we have, for example, Jesse Dodde and who's that? Uh, Jackson uh, in P15 and P16. Uh, both cars um, gained a 16 positions uh, in the first uh, 10 minutes of the race. They both started in P31 and uh, 32 respectively and are now P15, P16. It shows there is definitely merit in keeping your nose clean and just trying to get through the first yes. opening laps. Although, uh, although you might not be the fastest driver, sometimes being the cleanest driver does help as well. There is definitely yes. a merit to having a really strong amount of awareness and a decent amount of consistency as well because that will get you as many places, if not more, than just being fast on pace of yeah. And we have a few drivers like that. Uh, the next up would be uh, Taylor in the 198 car and uh, Peter Swim in the 519 car with 11 and 10 uh, places gained respectively. So yeah. people are doing quite good uh, in this race. It's good to see. Uh, it's good to see that people have been able to make the gains, been able to keep things clean. Harry Spears, a little bit of a gap pull in there. It looks like that Nick Hunt and Harry are both pulling a gap away as Diego has been able to overtake uh, the uh, BMW there. So he's now racing in P3. So we've got a 1 3 for the Porsches at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, so um, it's certainly uh, certainly going to um, break out for an interesting race as we're almost at the half point. And we also have uh, this speed trap at the end of uh, the start finish straight. It says uh, Nipam Shah, uh, Jerry Lipponen, and uh, uh, D. Brown, who's that with uh, first name? Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, 244 kilometers an hour is uh, the fastest speed. I don't know what's that in miles an hour. 244 k's, that's going to be roughly about 130, 540 miles an hour, I believe. Oh, we've got a spinner there. Uh, Jesse Dodd has unfortunately span as he attempts to rejoin the track. Yeah. Very careful Ooh. there, Jesse. Uh, yeah, he rejoins the track safely, but that's a bit of a shame for him. I believe he oh, yeah. have lost a few positions there. Uh, but yeah, if he just gets going again, gets his head down, he'll be able to make up some of the time he lost. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, these, these things happen to the best of us. Um, as you see, we've got a bit of a cluster of cars there going through, with Yoris at the back, uh, Hibana been on the leading the group, and the number 97 Aston Martin, who we saw fighting the leaders to begin with. Uh, it just shows you that once you're stuck in a train, it can be very hard to break out the train. The train. Yeah, meanwhile we have... Um, something happened to Nipam Shah. He dropped from P2 to P4. Uh, I believe he... Yeah, I'm looking at the... Uh, the top five at the moment, they're very much spread out. I wonder if something happened. Maybe he spanned it accidentally and collected the number uh, 12 Aston Martin there as well. Yeah, we're very uh, profiting uh, off of that with a gap of 4.4 seconds as of now. Oh, 4.0, just updated. Yeah, it looks like Diego's been overtaken as well by the number 86 BMW. He's probably going to want to try and clear that BMW so that he can see if he can close the gap up to Harry. I, I think he might have a chance at trying to match his pace, but he's going to really struggle to be fast there. Because it's all good being the, uh, it's all good matching the leader's time, but you're not getting them, unfortunately. Uh, which is, um, and he's got to make a pass work as well, which normally costs at least two to three seconds a lap. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one, as he has a bit of a sniff there, taking a wider line through the uh, back straight taking a very tidy line, both of them there, the P2 and the P3 car. 
going into the final corner. Diego breaks much later, gets a really solid run. Is he going to be able to use the exit speed though? Yeah, still carries a decent exit. I think the BMW got a slightly better exit though. They seem to be about matched because the BMW, I believe, is turbocharged compared to the naturally aspirated facets of the Porsche. Which will, uh, a naturally aspirated, will always be able to get better throttle response than a turbocharged car. Uh, which is why you will sometimes see the likes of the Aston Martin suffering compared to the bigger engine. Uh, uh, the bigger engine old Aston Martin or the uh, the the, uh, the Aldis and the Lamborghinis of the world. But yeah, nose to tail now going through that final bit of the first sector. It's the bit where the Porsche really is the strongest because of how tight and uh, uh, the it is. But it's going to be in that uh, this middle sector, in the final sector, where you need the power to push it down and up the straights. So the BMW might be able to make a break, break make a break a little bit here have a little bit of breathing room as you can see with the power on the corner exit being able to just give him a bit of breathing room yeah and, uh, we see in p10 uh, also he won a banana under pressure from uh, Jovis in uh, we have uh, Audi uh, and uh, Porsche yes I'll spread out a bit. looking tight between those two I think that it could go either way both of these two are both known to be very good drivers he won a banana winning the um, PRC uh, Cup one of the uh, one of the seasons and Yaris has been a, a regular top flight contender in the uh, biscuit uh, biscuit sprint series uh, time and time again. So both these guys are very experienced, been around there, but they've also got to be careful. Victor Gallon's in the background there, and he is going to yeah. be down there next. Yoris is having a little bit of a squirm through the Schumacher S, so uh, Victor Gallan just be able to inch closer to him. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I'd say these three are probably very even in terms of skill and speed. I wouldn't want to call a race between these three, but we're watching it happen now. Um, looks like that the uh, the Audi might have a bit of the advantage in the straight line, but as you can see, as soon as we get into the chicane, the Porsche does close up massively, using its aero and balance advantages to... Uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, making it so much more smooth through the uh, final corner, closing the gap up. I think uh, Habana's going to have to be really careful in this first set test that he doesn't come under too much pressure from um, Yoris. Um, last lap of a 156.5 there from him. Uh, so I think it's, it's going to get interesting these next few laps for these group. Yeah. Uh, we also have Jesse Dodde and Pavlo Poluchuk in P18, P19 added again, the two BMWs. Uh, just to keep you updated on that while we are watching uh, the other guys fight. Yeah, those two looking pretty close together. Oh, no, I now, they're certainly, uh, certainly ones to watch. Looks like Victor might be dropping back a little bit or he might just be biding his time just in case anything happens. I believe, if I remember right, Yoris and uh, Victor there are both teammates together. Yeah, 519 and 419. So oh, pa Pavlo going for the move on the inside, but uh, Jesse Dottie just able to defend. He tries it again. Oh, he's going for the move. A uh, bit of contact, not really. He, he looks like he makes the move. Uh, Jesse Dodd makes the defensive move work there. Uh, as uh, uh, Pablo there will, might have a look into this corner. But it's a yeah. difficult one to overtake because you'll put yourself at a disadvantage going through this one here because you'll be on the outside. So you yes. want to wait till you're at the hairpin before you can do it. As Pablo is doing, he's got the run on Jesse Dodd. Jesse goes to the inside to take the defensive. Uh, Pavlo handled up around the outside because of the corner banked. It's so hard to make that outside line work because you can take so yeah. much speed carrying that inside line through. Uh, yeah, and Jesse just uh, sticks it to the inside. No, um, no possibility to a cutback here. Yeah, unfortunately. If I think uh, Pavlo, if he doesn't get the move then in the next, next corner, I think he's just a bit too far back. Mm. His last, op his next opportunity mm. is going to be the last corner, I think. The chicane As we, okay. okay. Uh, we just have some shenanigans in P15 to P14. Oh, Christ, yes, I can see them. But uh, David Brown there having uh, having to defend hard from uh, Ryan Curtis, sorry, having to defend hard from David Brown there. Uh, and we've also got Jackson in the Aston Martin as well, looking if anything's going to go wrong between these two. Um, Dale, uh, Dale Jackson just got overtaken by uh, David Brown, so we're looking at a possible double overtake here. David Brown having a look round the outside, Ryan Curtis. Remember that Ryan Curtis has that penalty. 
Martin Vavia there in the background as well. This might this freeway might turn into a four-way if they're not careful. Um, as they uh, come round the first sector now, Ryan Curtis has to be very mindful of David, who is certainly sniffing all over that back bumper. Oh, hey, uh, so. Okay, uh, things are just starting to kick off everywhere. Um, Samikal just over uh, took um, Felix Chef as right. well or P20. Uh, Jesse Doddy still uh, in pursuit of uh, pa pa how's it called? Pavlo, uh, Pavlo or Polovchuk. So we have some action here uh, with only nine minutes left into the race. Yeah, as we see Martin Valvia having a look at the, the outside of the Aston Martin. That is how you certainly have a look around the outside there. Does he make the move stick? He does. What a fantastic send around the outside of that Aston Martin. Later on the brakes and carries that mid-engine balance straight through the corner where the front-engine car will have to fight the understeer, meaning that pinning him to the inside line will always cost him time. David Brown there looking to the inside. And Favia sends it up the inside. Doesn't quite make it stick, but what a what a send. The Aston Martin there looking at making advantage of the offline Favia as he does go up the inside again. Favia fights back, coming down into the chicane, going through the corner. The Aston's got the inside line. They're side by side comes the chicane. Favia gets the move done. The Aston, the other, the Aldi, David Brown having a look at the inside and the chicane can't get the move done. Ryan Curtis fends it off well. Christ, this battle of force going on. <laughs> Up into the uh, final corner, all is well for the time being. But Vavia has a look at the inside of David Brown. This is certainly going to uh, go the distance between these guys. None of them want to give up anything between the four of them. Two of them with 15 seconds penalties, though. Vavia and Curtis there. They're kind of fighting their own little battle. And so are David Brown and Jackson, who are kind of fighting, who don't have penalties. And they go free wide through the first corner, up into the second corner. And there's contact! Vavia has made contact. Oh, and he collects the Ooh. Aston Martin. No, that is not what you want to see. That is a massive no, shame. Oh, not it's like that. Great racing between them. David there having to do a, just a quick flick spin, but he's lost a few positions. You just saw that battle uh, between Jesse Dodd and one of the, uh, and Excal, I believe, as uh, Jesse does look at maybe fighting back. No, he's let the position go. Uh, check they're having a look at Jesse Dodd. Can he uh, get the move down, done into the next corner? Jesse having the poor exit that the uh, previous car through. No, he thinks yeah. wiser of it. Um, certainly been a very interesting sprint race this has been. Um, P8 and P7 are currently fighting as well, having a very close race. Uh, but look, so we've got... Uh, uh, there we go. Gurgley there in the Aston Martin, as well as Oscar in the Aston, uh, in the uh, sorry Gurgley in the Audi with Oscar in the Aston Martin. Coming around the final corner, you can see where that naturally aspirated lack of lag, the responsiveness, does help. Just driving it out the corner compared to the Aston's turbocharged lag. Go down to the corner, and the Aston Martin gets the move into the first corner. Is there going to be any fight back? No, it looks like the position is secure for now. Uh, really strong stuff there from the Aston Martin. Forced himself there, and the Audi runs a bit wide. Although, much later on the brakes in the, Audi, in the Aston Martin, the Audi is, as he then looks to put the throttle down and carry on out there, carrying as much speed as he can. That's why we have uh, Ryan Curtis and... Wait, uh, oh my game, thank you. Yeah, Ryan right. Curtis and Dave Jackson are uh, uh, continuously fighting, uh, even after that crash they're uh, at it. With um, uh, Pavlo Pavlochuk, yeah, joining the battle. Certainly on the look, we're certainly going back into a freeway between those uh, those two drivers. And again, as the uh, BMW has a look at the Aston Martin, the Aston Martin wisely backs off there. A very strong move. And it's up two in one. Is he going to go for the double? Ryan Curtis goes to the defence. Is the BMW going to have to get the run out the corner? Unfortunately, he can't. He's still oh, he's a bit still of there. Path, though. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like there, but is he going to have a look into the corner? Not necessarily the wisest move because of how the corner goes. He's had to take a compromised line, leaning Dale to get a little bit of a run in there. Or a bit of a bump there from the um, BMW, from what I could see, and this was just a bit of bad net code. Uh, but they've got to be careful as well because I think there's some other guys behind that might be sat under the sniff if they're not careful. And uh, Ryan goes wide! Yep. 
One yeah. gets wide and lets the uh, BMW through. That is going to be a massive shame for him, but he's, unfortunately his battle isn't really going to be with um, with that BMW driver because he's got that 15 second penalty. His battle was with um, Martin Vavia, who's already gone. Uh, he's gotten a lot quicker, has Martin. Certainly improved massive amounts. Uh, the Aston Martin there as well, having a look on Ryan. He's sniffing all over the back of him. Is he going to be able to get the move done? Ryan uh, involved in another three-way battle. A part of me does yeah. begin to wonder if he does maybe have a little bit of damage. <laughs> oh, and the Aston Martin gets forced up wide by the NSX. The NSX and the run yeah. into the chicane. got a bit of bullet there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just getting chaotic. Uh, so the NSX all over the back of the Aston Martin as they charge up towards the final corner. Oh, yeah. bit, of, oh bit of contact oh. there. Uh, Ryan being forced out. Oh! oh. That's okay. A painful one there for the NSX being forced into the wall. Sammy Kyle just uh, getting a little bit rough there. Yeah, I noticed he was getting a bit rough through the drivers. I wonder what the I, what the stewards will think of that one. But I think there was a bad, bit of bad contact there because I think he was only intending to rub him up. But yeah, the, the, that's also brought um, Sheck back into the fray for this battle as well. And Jesse Dodd is not too far behind. So uh, it could get interesting here with watching these guys. Um, Theo Jackson now ahead of Ryan Curtis, who uh, check has a look at the inside for, but just can't quite get the uh, get the move done there. You well, have a 13 car. Uh, Joe Lippon getting a 15 second pen penalty for uh, valuable contact. Uh, oh, Ryan Curtis forced out wide there by Sheck as we uh, see him take the inside line of the corner and there might be some more contact again. I believe Ryan, looking at his pace, he seems to be a bit slower than others in a straight line. I think he might have some aero damage looking at the way that car is going. It's not mm -hmm. looking happy, is it, the way he's going? Yeah, he just for... again in that corner, go breaking way too late to try and compensate for his lack of straight on speed. Yeah, uh, you might be right with some damage and it doesn't, like, make sense to go into the pits with 2 minutes 30 left. Fortunately not, especially with that 15 second penalty. Uh, as yeah, as you can see now, the Audi making light work, even on that short straight. Um, it's going to be interesting though to see. Yeah, gets the move done cleanly there. As uh, Jesse Dobb will now have a look as well. I'm just going to go back up to see what's going up at the front of the grid. So we've still got the, uh, the, the the fight for between P2 and P3. Diego goes wide into the corner while trying to have a look at the inside of the BMW. Uh, so he's going to have to have a, make a bit of time up there. Um, looks like it might have spread out a little bit. Harry Spears does have a bit more of a gap in front now. Uh, but it's looking like Harry is looking pretty comfortable out there so long as he doesn't make any mistakes like we saw him qualify him. But I think he's smarter than that and realises as long as he just keeps it consistent, he doesn't have to do a huge amount more now to uh, see this through. Yes, Harry also with the fastest uh, lap of the race with a uh, 1 minute uh, 54 seconds, uh, 54.312. Is that faster than in qualifying or did he go into the 53s in qualifying? Uh, no, that's faster. I think, yeah, I think he's getting used to that Porsche at the moment then, because I, I think that you wouldn't normally see someone of Harry, Harry's calibre going quicker in, uh, quicker in the race and qualify him. Uh, but yeah, see, uh, a few okay, of the, uh, the final lap of the race, uh, just so you're all aware, uh, Harry Spears has just started the final lap of the race with one minute left on the clock. Um, uh, let's see, it looks like the, uh, there's going to be a bit of a fight between P2 and P3 for the final few laps of this race. So we'll, uh, we'll go on board and for the final lap. If you could just keep any posted on any of the battles going around the circuit, it would be fantastic, mate. Um, yes. As we see the uh, number 86 BMW holding very stoically there with the Porsche all over the back of him. As they now go through sector one, going to the final corner, the Porsches might have a bit of a run. As you can see in the slipstream, Diego is tucked in. He's not going to want to finish P P3 when he knows P2 is so close. He is going to want that position. A 1-2 for Porsche on the uh, BMW and Nürburgring is certainly going to be a bit of a middle finger. Um, but yeah, it's going into the final time around the bottom hairpin as uh, we see a very tidy line from the BMW on entry. Both of them, neither of them running wide at all, keeping it clean, uh, trying to get the best exit they can. Uh, I think Diego may have got a little bit better exit there, but I don't know if it would be enough to try to push through and go for a move. Uh, as you can see, he's really not far behind at all. I, uh, I 
we're not on a quarter between these two, especially as we approach the last bits and Rob's the uh, last bits of the race. Um, as we uh, make the move now into the final time, we'll go through the last sector of the track. Uh, you see they're approaching on a back marker, but I don't know if they'll actually end up meeting in before they end up uh, finishing this race up. Into yeah, the, we uh, see. Jigo basically has uh, three outright send it now. Yeah, I don't believe he'll have the time to make the move. I'm just going to switch over so we can watch Harry Spears finish uh, finish the race as we watch him cross the line in P1. Fantastic race from him. Basically, they the likes of the flag victory, although it came under a lot of pressure. Uh, P2 and P3 there for uh, the BMW and the Porsche, respectively, uh, as we'll flip through and we'll see that Norton there finishing P4. Nippan finishing a P5. Uh, just see if anything else. The Audi there having a look. Oh, I believe that's their BMW. It may have been a lap down. Let's see what else is going on in the track. So, yeah. Uh, Victor looks like he did end up finishing ahead of Yaris. I don't know if Yaris had a spin or anything mm -hmm. like that, but um, good for him on that one. Well, it is about this. The order gets a bit jumbled up when they all start finishing, so because uh, everyone starts leaving and stuff, so that's why the camera's going a bit funky. Uh, yeah, we need to wait a bit for the official results. Yeah, Arian Hash there going uh, to finish uh, finish up here. You these positions won't be correct now because people will start leaving the lobby so uh, we'll have to wait a little bit you'll have to wait to the discord to see the final results unfortunately so we can't show them on stream but we certainly can tell you that it was a p1 for harry spears there and a solid win overall yes fantastic stuff but very yeah very good performance very good performance from everyone today uh i've got to say i have um, been impressed with all of their driving and i can't fault anyone throughout that race. There's been a few, obviously, tough ones here and there. Uh, Ryan Curtis obviously picking up penalty. Same with Martin Vavia. Uh, they'll, they'll get applied after the fact as well, which is why we can't go ahead and give an official result. But, yeah, good stuff from everyone. Um, and it's been a fantastic stream. I will see if I can get hold of Harry Spitz to see if we can uh, give him a quick interview. Is that right? Yep, all right, give me two seconds. Uh, right, give me a second. Where is he? Shoot to find him, I haven't messaged him in ages. Just let him know as well, uh, just so he's aware. Uh, just dropped him a message. Hopefully it'll pick up. But yeah, um, good good stuff overall. I thought really good fight we saw, especially from that group, including um, uh, a couple of the cars there, including um, I'll try it again. Uh, Ryan Curtis there, who was on to fight off that damage towards the end. Um, saw some good defending from him. Unfortunate about his penalty, but it's kind of what you get um, when you do cause uh, cause collisions. Um, just trying to see if we can get hold of Freebo now. Uh, just tried to message him. I don't believe I've just been able to get hold of him. Um, fortunately, um, don't know if I'm, I don't know if I've had a response yet. Would you want to see if we could message uh, the stewards see if we can get their thoughts? Yeah, let's see if I can get a hold of. Probably of Deck. Deck, come into the VC. You're probably watching us. Yeah, Deck, Deck and Donut. I can't get hold of Fruber, so you're going to come to the VC. We're interviewing you. I don't know if they are. Oh. Ah, Fruber's message back. Uh, so we'll have Fruber with us in a second. So if you just give us two seconds, and we'll uh, we'll grab him in just for a quick interview. All right. Uh, I just said to join any VC, so ah, there he is. Fantastic, I've got him in here. Uh, fantastic. And we'll unmute in a second. So we've got Frubo with us, the race winner. A fantastic lights the flag victory for you. Um, some really good stuff there. You're currently muted, mate. So if you could just unmute and just tell us how that went for you. Yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a really tough one for me because obviously I had a different race today. I had the uh, ADAX trophy. 
Uh, which we unfortunately had to retire to due to a number of uh, circumstances. So yeah, I <laughs> came today without actually planning to race. But Is that why you're in the Porsche today? Broken. Pardon? Is that why you're in the Porsche today? <laughs> yeah, I was actually... Um, I am in the Porsche for the whole championship actually just because I sort of wanted to learn how to drive it. But, oh, right, okay. Yeah, for the rest of it, I wasn't actually planning to drive. So uh, <laughs> in qualifying, not sure if you saw, but literally my final lap was the only valid lap that I managed we, to get uh, We saw your yeah, first that that. final lap. Uh, that first lap getting that uh, going off the uh, road there was a bit unfortunate for you on that first line lap uh, on the final sector. Looking like a good lap up until that point. Yeah, it really was. It was uh, it's really tough in this car. Obviously, they've got so much rotation in the high speed. Over the curb, surprisingly, it's not too bad. But have when you, you come off the brakes, it just uh, yeah, it wants to go around. Have you given any of uh, Pavel's setups any goes yet in the Porsche? Uh, no, sadly not. So far, I've um, I was actually running Jordan Grant Smith's SRO setup today, which he very kindly sent to me. Ah, right. Yeah, I meant to give Pavel set up a go, but we because we weren't planning to do uh, do the race today. I never quite got around to it. But from this race on, I think I'll probably be almost certainly be using his setup. All ah, right, fair enough then. Yeah, it's good, good, solid win for you. Looks like you came under a lot of pressure actually from the fan uh, towards the race. What happened when you yeah, got early? Back? <laughs> yeah, you did really well actually. It's a yeah, it's a shame we um, caught a chicane on a few times. But right, yeah. yeah, at the start, cause obviously because I came with uh, so little practice, literally I was just absolutely holding on for dear life for um, well the entire race really. Uh, so for the first few laps, I was literally just sort of feeling out the car. This is the first time I've driven it on racing. Yeah, it was like uh, Diego was also very quick thing. as well, keeping you honest with that BMW as well, uh, and the yeah, BMW definitely. driver as well. Yeah, I think he'd have been right up there if he uh, didn't get overtaken at the start. Yeah, he's, he's looking like it's going to be an interesting championship then with how it's going to proceed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it should be an interesting right. one. Thank you for joining us, and um, yeah, we'll uh, see you in a bit. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you and congratulations. Thanks, man. All right, okay. I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us. Any final words there, um, Pandas? Uh, did this was a good uh, good race? I'm excited for the next one. Uh, we had some really strong showings from a couple of people. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a few guys improving their um, positions from quality over ten to, uh, tenfold, like, that's really good. Um, I'm very excited for the next one. Yeah, it's going to be gonna be interesting, uh, and it's going to be great to see the rest of the championship unfold. But yeah, we'll be back with you guys next time for round two. So, hope to see you guys again, and uh, great, great, great race, everyone. I'll see you guys in a bit.